So welcome to the final third. Um, again, where we talk about just soccer. Got my boys Jamie and Pebo in the house. Um, you know, representing yo. So I just want to get right to it. I'm, I'm gonna skip all the other stuff. I just want to get the talking, man. So tell me a little about you guys, man. Tell me where you guys grew up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Jamie, you can uh, start, man. Grew up in Gaithersburg. T Bird. Yeah, went to McGruder. Played for Only growing up. It was like Pebo, Tyler, Rudy, all the guys. From the area, yeah. Moore, yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, it. Uh, and then, like, when Academy got really big, like, and DC United started coming in, mm-hmm. uh, it was just too long of a commute for me to go down to DC. Yeah. So I stayed at Potomac. I, like, didn't even give the effort to go out and mm-hmm. try and play down there. But I mean, Potomac was still. Potomac on Academy their, was yeah. chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was still on their yeah. um, We were playing, obviously, everything was up in Germantown, mm-hmm. which is still, like, a huge still, facility. Yeah, right? dude, it's um, crazy up there, man. Yeah, so I played um, Potomac under Brian Gills and. Uh, Chris Hazard, mm-hmm. who both were like college coaches, everything, both local college coaches, American University in Georgetown. Okay. Um, enjoyed that. The best part about that for me was that when I was U16, I got to play with the U18s a little bit. And so, like, I could fluctuate in between, like, guys that were much older than yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get used to the physicality and stuff. How was that experience? Because I still, I still battle with some parents that are like, I don't want my kid playing up two years just so he can go up there and get, like, out – you know, physical lose every physical battle and da 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 da. And us coaches, we're really like, it's a great way to develop the player. How how would you tell parents that are going through that same thing? Like, yeah. it made me better, or I, I'm actually learning rather than. I think it makes so. I think it made me a smarter player mm-hmm. because I didn't want to go up against a kid that was going to absolutely plow me over. That's true. So my movements were smarter because I was trying to get the ball and get it away quicker than he would get to me. Facts. So you learn how to move on the field. Yeah. So much smarter. I mean, you look at Gideon, guys in the area. Yeah, yeah, Gideon yeah. Gideon was actually on the only Rangers younger team from my team. So we yeah. were like the U16s. He was on the U14s with Jeremy uh, Ibovice and uh-huh. this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick team. And all those guys, you look at Gideon now, he's still a smaller kid. He's still, like, not built like you would expect, like, some American center midfielder. Right. But he knows how to move, move. in the field because his physicality. He's a smart player. He's, yeah, he's smarter than everybody else. That's he's true. Spots that he needs to. And pocket play. So, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's I the... I think that that's the answer. I mean, you that's throw that key. kid in there and see if he can actually figure it out mentally rather than try and beat them physically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, no, sorry, Chris. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, so from there, um, went from U16s to U18s. And while I was on the U16s, like one of my last years, Nick Brightsameter, another local kid who was committed to West Virginia, he was getting scouted and a couple of the coaches were there watching him and they asked, is there anybody on the younger team that you know that we'd like to like, yeah. check out? Yeah. He was like, yeah, watch Jamie. He's one of my really close That's friends. That's crazy. And it's... on the same thing, I grew up with playing with Pebo yeah. because my best friend was... Pebo's best friend's younger brother. Yeah. So when we would hang out, I'd go to my best friend's house. Pebo's there chilling with Dylan, and I'm with Mitchell. And we're That's just lit. Four of us hanging out. See, oh, like so he's there. My friend's there. The coaches. It just was like a perfect scenario where Nick Bright's meter is getting watched. Mm-hmm. The coaches are there. He asks. You know, mm-hmm. you see, boom, and then there's just too many connections for them. Like, we know who this kid is. Right, right, right. I I always try to tell parents who you hang out with is like the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Being a soccer player, trying to go and play soccer because what you surround yourself with would one be your competition level. So you always compete with those guys, and if they're aspiring to more, you always want to aspire to more. Yeah. Two, the opportunities that come around their way will always find a way to come around you if you're there. You know, the first thing, the opportunities to show up. You know, the first step to getting opportunities to show up. So if you're around a crowd that's like that, it's always gonna be there. Hundred percent about connections. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, if you can play, especially now, like if there's more kids playing in the area. Yeah. So the more kids you know, then the more connections you can like go here or go to a different training session and because someone else is going there that you know it's like mm-hmm. you just come in and get it and you can get more sessions in mm-hmm. I mean I think just everything about connections and knowing people mm-hmm. it's just going to drive kids to do better I think, I think it's also mentality as well like if, if we're hanging out we're soccer players and we're hanging out we're going to talk about soccer 
over that's the top true. That's and true. That's true. You know, just how the game has changed and that's stuff true. like that, which essentially helps you play, you know, yeah. kind of gets you to understand, you know, how to play the game. So I think it's it's mentality and it's culture, you know, just hanging out with that group of friends. Not to say you shouldn't have friends that don't play soccer, but of course. when you do have friends that play soccer, you're more, you're like, in focus mm-hmm. about what's going on in the game and stuff. Like well, speaking that. about, like, like that aspect of it, um, how was it like, because when we were growing up, soccer wasn't, like, yeah, the no. sport, you know what I mean? It was still, it was, it was making its way up, but it wasn't, like, still making it you know, up. still making its way up now. How was it having to balance that and, like, gelling with, like, the football guys or the basketball guys, but still being true to soccer? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know when you got yeah, the high school, yeah, it was kind of tough, unless you went to a soccer high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which Magruder was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was kind of a soccer I mean, high school, I'm not even going to hold you, yeah, dog. Yeah, I kind of got lucky. Yeah. Like, you, our basketball team was good. Our football team was trash. Yeah. So, like, it was soccer and basketball. Yeah. So, the soccer and basketball guys, I mean, if you were winning, everybody would, like, we all knew each other. Yeah, like, everybody yeah, could win. Yeah. And then they'd come watch us. That's but true. when it came to, like, when I got to college... There was no intermixing. Nah, it yeah. was. You're, 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 you're either you're soccer or your football yeah. or your basketball. Like on a few occasions, there would be a little bit of. Like I guess like parties and Pat White can go to whichever one he wanted yeah, to. For real, for real. Yeah, I mean, like, he was just like, man, I, I choose what yeah, 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 party I'm going to Interesting dynamic yeah. though, because at West Virginia, you have the Coliseum where basketball plays. Yeah. And that's where every other sport except for football has study hall. Uh, so you've got soccer, women's and men's, you've got track and field, you've got wrestling. Mm-hmm. You've got volleyball, and then you have men's basketball, women's basketball, mm-hmm. and then we're all mingling. So when we see each other in study hall, and then we go see each other out, yeah, like what's yeah, up? Yeah. So but football, football is on their, on their own their level. Whole yeah. other level. They've got their own place to eat. They've got their own tutors. They've got their own facilities. Who brings in the most money? Football, you guys know huh? football. Sure. football. That's the reason more than more than basketball. Bas- I, I feel like are the ties shape, but West Virginia basketball is like oh yeah. I mean I don't know man. Struggling this year. Yeah. They, they yeah. <laughs> but um, I feel like the whole switch from Big East to Big 12 was because of football. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So let's get back to, to the story. All right. So when did you meet Peebo? When I was like 12. 12? Yeah. All right. Take me. All right. Now you tell me where, where you started and how you got to where the 12 year old age. Where I started? Yeah. So I started off playing for MSI. So it's just crazy. My parents. It's never really put pressure on me to play soccer. Yeah. They kind of just do what you want to do. Right. Sports, try what you want to try. So I ended up playing for this MSI team. I can't remember the name or the coach, but I just remember, like, you know, the coach is like, look, I, I appreciate you on the team, but this is not where you're supposed to be. Yeah. This is, like, wreck. <laughs> so we ended up looking for different teams, and somebody yeah. recommended uh, Julio Arjona Sr. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up playing for his MSI team, which is a little bit more competitive. Right. Um, so played there for a minute, and then eventually he branched off and made or made his own club, MSC United. Yeah, MSC. Um, was, was that the first MSC? Uh, so he had an older team. They were, like, at the time, they were probably, like, a few years older than us yeah they weren't i don't know if they were obsl or ncso so, okay i mean the bigger club in the area was mm-hmm. like the first msc okay. yeah, msc dragons yeah um, and then there was another team i can't remember um so play play with them for a minute um probably like five or six seasons mm-hmm. eventually uh moved to bethesda road and I just played for bethesda and that was around the time where we started to get to know each other. That was yeah. when twelve year old. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so you were at Potomac, you were at Bethesda, yeah. but you guys I, still I, hung out. Only at that. Oh, point. you were at only. I didn't go to Potomac till like when the academy got big around like 15, 16 years 15, old. 16? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so you guys spent a lot of time playing against each other. Um, so he's he, yeah, he's younger. So I mean, I, would, I don't think we ever played against each other. But not in club, growing not up, in club. Just like yeah, okay. He was a senior. Oh, so yeah, when you were twelve, you weren't you weren't playing up at all. You were still playing. No, nah, when I was at 12, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I was playing like you, you 13. You 13s, yeah, okay, no, we, okay. I don't think we've ever had the opportunity to play against each other in a, in a club match. Yeah. Like, we were we were close. Like, we would hang out. We would play pickup together and mm-hmm. practice and stuff like that. So, yeah. okay. um, I mean, it was just the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, same thing. So, how did you get scouted to, to go to West Virginia? West Virginia, man, it's crazy. So, my first year, I went to Damascus. Yeah. Played JV soccer uh, <laughs> for like half the season and then getting called up to varsity um then transferred to clarksburg yeah uh 
play. That was as soon as Clarksburg was yeah, built. Yeah, as soon as Clarksburg was built, I was like, yeah. I, I went to Clarksburg. Yeah. Was that by choice or were they just yeah, like, you yeah, live here? Yeah, I had you were like, I'm getting out of here, yeah, though. I mean, first of all, it was screw so this. Nice. The commute was so much closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, taking the bus to Damascus every day was just, bro, that shit blew me every The time. boonies, man. Um, but, and I also knew the uh, soccer coach. Jeremy Spoles was a teacher at Damascus and yeah. he would always talk and he's like, look, I want to build this program like this. And I was like, the vision, yeah, yeah, yeah. The vision is dope and whatever. Yeah, thanks, um, ended up transferring to Clarksburg um, and playing three years there. My junior year, beginning of my junior year, I joined DC United Academy. Mm-hmm. So I was going to like showcases, getting looked at by uh, like the national team and stuff like that. And that's where it really took off in terms of like scouting. Before I didn't really have anything um, just based off of my high school career. But yeah. it was a lot of the club aspect that, that got me scouted. Mm-hmm. So um, as soon as that happened, you know, I was playing U16s and U18s for DC United and then West Virginia College and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So now you're at West Virginia. You go in as a striker, right? Yeah, yeah. And your freshman year, did you play striker? So, it's the funniest thing, though. So, my senior year, or excuse me, my uh, junior and senior year in high school, I was playing forward of high school, in high school, but defense at, in club. In club, okay. So, I was okay. playing left back. So, the full that, spectrum, yeah, man. That's, yeah. So, going into freshman year, uh, Marlon, our head coach at West Virginia, he was like, look, you, you like, I see you as a striker. Right. You know, me, a college kid, I'm like, yo, like, bet. That's what I just want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to play. Yeah. So the first three years, uh, I was an attacking player at West Virginia, mm-hmm. and then my senior year, I was a left. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a crazy yeah. transition. It was, it was right wild. There, man. Wild it's, story. It's like a really like kind of like common though. It's yeah. Eerie yeah. how similar yeah. like our stories are in yeah. terms of that. Yeah. So like, tell I'm me about playing, yours, man. I'm playing center mid. Yeah. And at Potomac. Like a, either a six or a ten, mm-hmm. and then as I'm getting recruited, Ray Gaddis was a senior when I was a senior in high school. So he's he's gonna go he's off the out, he's yeah. gonna go to, the, to the MLS. MLS, yeah. And so they're trying to fill a role of a right back. Mm-hmm. And so when I was getting recruited, like Chad Brown and uh, BJ were mm-hmm. like. Look, we'd love to bring you in. You have the athleticism to get up and down. Yo, the BJ way. is a great coach, yeah, by yeah, the way. Like I, you know, that guy love, is love the being coach man. Love dude. him. Yeah, go on. Coached by him, but that's another. Yeah, I didn't get to go coach by him, but just yeah, like yeah. I've had lots of experience just, with him, training with him. Yeah, yeah. Just, just recruiting. Great, him. great yeah. philosopher of the game. Yeah. yeah, just he has great points. So, so I'm getting recruited. They're like, look, right back is where we want to bring you in. You can get up and down, and then we'll work on like understanding how to defend. Right. Because I mean, I'm playing in the midfield. Like, right, right, right. It's not my thing. Exactly. <laughs> so, really? then I, so then I get to I get to school and in the spring prior to my first semester there they brought in Nick Raskowski who is this kid from Seattle who's mm-hmm. like another ridiculously athletic right back mm-hmm. so he got a whole spring semester ahead of me and he was killing it in the spring so yeah. when I got there Marlon got was a lot like to prove, man. hey uh I think we can throw you up top yeah so I was That's like it. I'll play anywhere. Where do you want me to play? Right, right. Mentally, mentally, I came in and I was like, I'm going to play right back. That's what I want to do. Uh-huh. Got there and it was like, now you're playing at number nine. Mm-hmm. So I got in and I did all right. Yeah, I mean, I had a few bangers. You know. Yeah. 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 Two, I had two goals. You know, see what's, <laughs> but what's crazy is you guys are growing up in there. Luckily, you had a good coach like yeah. Julio. I'm yeah. not sure who you said your coach was at Potomac. I, I forgot P. his Wood name. Pete Wood. Pete Wood. Unreal. He's still a coach for Olney. Hey, oh, yeah? Um, yeah. So like, at that point though, contrary, I was playing at the Masses Fire and we were, we were or NCSL Division One. That was the highest we went. You know, our coaching wasn't really that. You know, I, I had a good good coach in Brad, but he wasn't. He was okay. Uh, but like they weren't teaching like total football. You know, so if, if you were a center midfielder, you're a center midfielder. That's all you're taught to know how to play. Yeah. If you're an attacker, blah 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 blah, defender and so forth, right? So now I'm telling all my kids and all my parents, oh, we're playing total football. Like you got to be able to play right back, exactly. left back, center back. You got to be interchangeable because yeah. you never know. You know what I mean? How are you gonna say I'm gonna move from a left back to a striker? Yeah, but nowadays it's yeah. it's a it's a thing. It's a physical thing. It's it's like almost common. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's crazy. Both of you guys went through that, and I'm trying to tell people like be able to play every position, yeah. enjoy playing every position. Oh, not yeah. just be able to do it, enjoy it. Yeah. Figure it out. You know what I mean? It so off because I remember back in the day, like 
this time, winter time, Huli used to have us in his garage. Like he would <laughs> take the cars out, we'd be in his garage, touches. on touches, but also like focusing on my right foot. Yeah. Today I feel just as comfortable with my left foot with my right foot. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's so, it. like looking That's back, it. like damn Julio, like you yeah just, nah you yeah for that but like it's just crazy that's lit so, bro that paid off so mm-hmm. it's, it's wild yeah so all right so now you're in college mm-hmm. when do you so it's your junior year that's when you you get to it's west virginia senior. your senior year okay senior, so you guys yeah. had a whole four years yeah. which is also sick because i come in as an 18 year old freshman who doesn't know anybody Anything. on the team but nick bright's a meter who's a sophomore at the time yeah and pivo yeah. and so when i went on my recruiting visit i stayed in nick brightso's uh dorm which mm-hmm. was like I knew I was gonna be moving into those dorms, so it was like kind mm-hmm. of eye opening. Like, damn, I'm gonna have to live in Lion Tower, yeah, right? You know, one of the towers of West Virginia. Shout out towers, man. Shout out. But when I, yeah, when I get there, Pebo is like, look, come stay with me at my place with the older guys. Right. You can stay here for a couple of days before preseason starts, before you move in. Mm-hmm. And that early move in and meeting all those guys was so influential on like my transition from being a high school player right. to being a guy on the team. It yeah. was like you're not on a team until you're seniors and your captains like they, they give you, you in. yeah and because i got there early and they like got to meet me and i got to like hang out and party or whatever like it was like oh this kid's cool right we'll let him in but then some of my other freshmen like teammates came in and it was like those kids are intimidating and i'm like no nah, 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 that's that's people <laughs> and like ooh, you know <laughs> yeah so, so you look like the man the man man like you already know these guys you already know senior guys i don't know if it was like the man man but, it but was you were like comfortability like i was comfortable like moving Moving between lines, mm-hmm. and it was like, okay, now I can be myself on the field and off the field. Where most of the times you get there and you're walking on eggshells. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, the rest of my career there, when a freshman came in, it was like, get the bags, go do this, and everybody's like, is that good? Right, <laughs> right, right. And it's like, no, I was able to be like, yo, people, yeah. do you want to get the bags? I'll get the bags. That's it. Be okay with getting yeah, the yeah, bags. yeah. They weren't gonna like, I don't know, yeah, mess with me. How does that transition into your playing on the field? You, does that also make you more comfortable on the field, or does it make you more? More, more confident on the field. Yeah, I mean, you're building that relationship. Mm-hmm. So if I do something poor, mm-hmm. he'll tell me like, yo, that sucked. And if I do something well, it's the same sort of response where it's like, yo, yo that was good, but make sure you're also checking this out. Mm-hmm. So like, I kind of like fell into the little like circle quicker than most people would. Right. And that allowed me to like relax and not worry about, man, I'm going to mess up and then they're all going to hate they're me. They're not, yeah. At the end of the day, I think like we had a group that was super competitive, you know? Oh, yeah. And we all wanted the same goal is to like win and then get to the MLS. So like introducing him and like some of the other guys and just that was part of them making them feel more comfortable so they can, you know, be comfortable on the field and play right. better. You know what I mean? We don't want any like because I remember being a freshman and seeing some of the seniors too, and I was just like, dang man, I gotta I gotta play well. I gotta put so much pressure, pressure. to play well and like pressure yeah. looking at them, I'm like, yo, just come in and do your thing. Like yeah, everybody has a role we're trying to win at the same time. So that was that was part of the reason why we just wanted to keep the group the group close and, and yeah. you know, just have a good time. So yeah. Yeah. So that's dope. So I mean for I got a few kids right now who are getting looked at by D one schools. Um in making your decision to go to West Virginia and you too, what are the things that you take into consideration? And what were the things that were like key factors that made both of you guys go to West Virginia? Um, I, I would say for me, Marlon really sold me on his vision. Like I'm, I'm really like if you if you tell me something like you have plans, like mm-hmm. I want to include you to, in the plans. And I know sometimes there's coaches that will say that just don't to say follow it. through, right? You know? right. But Close Marlon was stuff. very genuine, at, like not just speaking with me, but speaking with my family, mm-hmm. like my my mom and my stepdad. Whenever I go up to West Virginia, they were with me, and you know I would always ask for their feedback, and they're like, we, we like we like this guy, we like it up here. Like they love West Virginia. They they go to West Virginia now without me. You know what I'm saying? Like they love it up there. <laughs> That's so. Um, so a lot of it was, you know, what he had to say, you know, visiting there, obviously, you know, when we had our official visit, like, yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was already sold, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was just like, I felt, I felt, you know, Maryland has a great program. Uh, Virginia has a great program. You know, there's a lot of great programs out there, but in a, in a sense, this, like we were building something at West Virginia, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you know, they obviously had success beforehand, but um, they had a couple down years before we came. So, you know, our, my, at least my vision or my reasoning for going there was like, I wanted to be a part of something that was being built. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was it for me. 
Yeah, I mean, mine was a mix of that and, like, school. I knew I wanted to do, like, some sort of, like, engineering. Right. Um, the other schools I was doing, like, at one point I wanted to go to uh, Georgetown, but I didn't have the SAT. Yeah, and yeah, I was so too stubborn there. to re- <laughs> retake the SAT. Um, and then I was looking at American, and American was, like, more of, like, a liberal, like, science. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There was no real engineering there. So when West Virginia came, it was an opportunity for me to get something where, I mean, everybody talks about how it's an easy school to get into, but it's also a hard school to stay to stay, oh, dude. A lot of people yeah. drop out. And trust me, bro. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah so definitely, bro. My thing was like, it's a good spot for me to be able to balance like playing footy mm-hmm. and studying and getting like a degree where I knew that if footy didn't work out. Because when I got to school as a freshman, I was not like, yeah, I want to go pro. Right. I want to play at the next level. Mine was like, yeah, I'm just going to have this help pay for college and ease my parents' load on terms of financials and stuff like right, that. Right. And then get a degree. Mm-hmm. And this happened to be the degree I got. I got in state tuition. So it was just like, like icing on the cake. That's a yeah. How'd you get in state? So there's a there's a thing called academic common market, and it's like states from like Maryland down to like Texas, like yeah. all intermittent in there. And if your university doesn't offer major offer the major in which you're going to study at the university you're going, Maryland will cover the out of state difference. So you only Holy pay in state, and the state of Maryland will cover the rest. Shit. Yeah. So the common market. Damn. Market's too. Like, the common market's big time. Sure. Yeah. Yo, we got it. I got it. Yes. I gotta write this down, man. I'm about to tell all my recruits. So like West Virginia is like thirty thousand dollars a year or something like that. I paid like eight grand. Yeah. That's fucking. Because I got in state tuition. It's that is lit, in bro. State schools bro. too. That is lit. Yeah. It's hey sweet. man, congrats. Yo, that's that's <laughs> that's real, man. I yo. Man. See, I feel like there's always, even though like the system, we struggle a lot. Like going to school and getting thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. in debt, which you okay. yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, you, know. you know, but there are loopholes. There are ways yeah. around things if you're willing to go out and look. When like, my mom found the academic academic common market yeah she went wild. she went ham yeah she, <laughs> she was like look I, don't worry I'll write all your essays like, we're getting into this facts you know I mean? we're gonna get by any essay. means yeah. bro looking out for yeah me. nah but no, that's that's lit dude you have to you have to I mean that's how the rich stay rich and that's how that's how the world moves oh you gotta find every little yeah. thing you gotta first you gotta know the rules then you gotta know how to play you know and what I mean you finagle it too cause I know I went to school actually a girl from Magruder went to West Virginia and we both had the same degree. Yeah. But like the semester before we graduated, mm-hmm. she switched her degree. She was in the academic common market, mm-hmm. the whole thing. The semester before she graduated, she switched her degree to computer engineering. So she played in state for three and a half years and then was able to like switch and just cover those electives for, those last. She needed for that last semester to get a computer engineering degree That's for right. the price of an in state degree. Damn. So you can definitely like. She is, cool. She's yeah. a real one. Perfect. She is a real one. Yeah. So now, yo, tell me about. Let's cap off the college years because you can't talk about West Virginia without talking about West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> the wild and wonderful, man. So tell me about the wild. How how is it being a soccer player? And by the way, when you guys were you guys were balling, yeah, soccer was lit. You know what I mean? I was right over at Frostburg, so you know you guys were the rave of that whole Western Maryland and West Virginia scene. You know what I mean? So how was it like being top dogs in soccer and then going out on a Friday night or like? He you know, <laughs> I want to hear these stories, nah, man. man. I mean, like you know, every school you party party at, you know, Frostburg. Frostburg was nuts. It's just like, you know, so many good nights. You, I don't really know where to start. You know, there's just so many. Good Who's the best nights. one? Is is there a best one? Uh, is that? I know that's that's that's, that's tough, but the best. I one. always I, like we talked about this last time, but I always remember uh, my junior year. Mm. We played the spring season. It's Spring season, obviously, the, the early, time yeah, to get and yeah, get, lay, get, lay off whatever. a little bit, yeah. Um, and we it was the last spring game, and we scrimmaged New York Red Bulls in mm-hmm. Jersey, and we took the bus back. And that same weekend was the weekend that the first weekend that I'm schmack. I'm schmack. <laughs> so we were all like, "Yo, yeah, let's, like, let's, go, let's get home. Yeah. Come on, let's get home. Bus driver, hurry up." <laughs> <laughs> And I just remember, like, the bus, you know, pulling into the Coliseum and just, like, you know, people just walking around, like, people laying on the sidewalk, like, sitting down on the sidewalk, just, like, uh, you know, it was just a good time. And then, you know, good night afterwards, but, you know, Yo, I don't remember much, but. Yeah. That is 
is crazy, I man. I can only imagine yeah. West Virginia that because West Virginia on the regular night is insane to yeah, me, yeah. man. It is insane to me. So especially when I'm uh, smack man. night, yeah, oh, yeah, crazy, yeah. It's just nuts. That's crazy though. That's lit. I bet Jamie. anybody who like was not at West Virginia in 2012 mm-hmm. who watched an I'm Schmack video yeah. at West Virginia yeah. was like, I'm gonna apply there. Dude, to see if I get facts. It. I'm sure. It's like I'm sure application point, rates went up after yeah. I'm Schmack, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. At one point, like like athletes and like I guess like celebrities were tweeting about it at West yeah. Virginia. Like Joe, I remember Josie Altador tweeted about it, like, yo, how come I didn't go here? It's like, like yeah, it's sweet. Like it's crazy. Wild, yo, it's that's crazy. lit. That's lit. It's, it's crazy to have lived through that, yeah. man. So I mean, there's there's a bunch of like good nights. Like I'm sure you you can speak on your behalf too, oh, bro. It's just like I feel like the energy after a win, like if a oh, big win, too, yeah, is just it's too good. People just go crazy. Yeah, like what? Ba- oh, what was it a few years ago? Yeah. When Baylor was ranked. Football was ranked uh, number two or three or something like that. Yeah, we had. I think we had a game the same day. It was a Saturday, and we won our game, and then. Baylor and West Virginia played at home. Yeah. And it was the game that Geno Smith just went wild. Mm. And, like, he was, like, it was, like, Madden or, like, NCAA football. Like, he threw for, like, 680 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We scored 73 points or something, like, wild like that. No problem, though. And uh, we were, it was me and, like, six other guys and then one of our, like, best friends. We lived in an eight-bedroom house. Yeah. Um, right downtown, like, on Grand Street, across from one of, like, the freshman dorms, like, mm. in the main strip of more in town mm-hmm. and we were like having people over and at the same time the Baylor ri- everybody was rioting outside Shit, so we, we were having a party like celebrating football win our win and everything and we step outside and there's a line of a f- police officers with riot shields and there's oh a group of students people were like tearing down like yeah and- oh, oh <laughs> man hanging what over, hanging all over Burning our neighbor's couches, house like- it was wild and then oh. one of, this one kid just like yells some outlandish stuff throws a glass bottle and it shatters right in front of the riot shields and next thing you know you just hear tear gas and they're just launching tear gas and pepper spray from the holy room. they're shooting like the uh, and your house bullets. is right there right there yeah. and it's that's like, fucking wild it's like September so we still had our AC units in yeah so as this we're is... all like yeah we're all hammered and this is all going on and there's pepper spray everywhere the people that are still inside are getting pepper sprayed because it's, it's coming through the, the house. So the the go ones inside. that go in like the window, yeah, like the, the window, window thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then I'm going inside and Fuck, next, you know, dude. like I'm like crying and I go to the w- mirror and I had no idea. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and you're just trying to clean your dude. eyes out. So the only thing you can do is just go back outside and watch the riot. Yeah, yeah, there's there's nothing else. yeah. Duh, if that's... you stand on your property, you couldn't get like in trouble. But the second you stepped off and you tried to make a move, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. dude, that's crazy, man. So you guys, man, yeah, West Virginia. Is, is always eventful you know that's that's why you guys I think are always ranked one of the the littest schools right and I mean wrong with a Thursday yeah, night yeah. from 9 to 12 that's 50 cent mix yeah, 50, 50 cent cheap yo like so you guys started money. I don't know if it came from West Virginia but penny pitchers became a thing at Frostburg because it was it was something that was it going was, on in yeah, West yeah, Virginia yeah, and they had to mountain, keep it competitive yeah, yeah, or yeah, some yo yeah, penny yeah. pitchers yo penny pitchers and then there's a place chicken bones had mug night yeah but mug wasn't defined so there were people <laughs> showing up with like five gallon buckets like trying okay. to get their the <laughs> mug filled up for a dollar right so, so, so you bring in a mug and they'll fill it up for they'll a dollar they'll fill it up Dude. for a dollar so you're just like yeah this That's is my insane. mug and then be like alright and then just wait mug night was 15 minutes yeah man so that's all right. College is a freaking. I, you know, if I could relive any point of my life, it would be college. But anyways, so you guys got through college. You guys graduated. You went on to play pro. Mm-hmm. How was that? Like, how was that transition? First of all, like, what did you know you were gonna go play pro? Like your junior, senior year of college, and you know what was that transition like when you did decide? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it. Like that was going pro was always the goal. Like, right. I always wanted to play for DC United and play in the MLS. Um, mm. So that was always the goal. Um, but did I know it was going to happen? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was probably about my senior year where I switched to left back and I was having success, you know, mm. during the season. Mm. Um, and just talking with um, just like coaches around. They're like, hey, like, you know, keep keep it up. Right. Give me a lot of encouragement, you know, that type of stuff. And that's why I started believing, all right, this is, you know, mm. this might happen. Um, and then, you know, luckily I graduated in December 
So that was like perfect timing for the next season. You know, preseason usually starts in like February. Um, so right after I graduated, I got called into a preseason uh, with Phoenix Wolves, now Phoenix Rising. Right. Was team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, trial there for a few days. And then the coach sent me back home. He's like, go get your stuff. Like, we're signing you. And then it just started from there. And I was one of the happiest days of my life, bro. That's so, lit. Yeah, for real. I was so happy. But, and then after that, it was just, you know, just play and then get noticed by a team and kind of work, work your way up. And right. Go from there. So, yeah. yeah. What about you, man? I never got there. I got close. Yeah, you got, you got mad but, close. I mean, when I was, so when I got to my junior year was when I, like, thought alright this could happen that was like mm-hmm. my best season mm-hmm. um, and like guys that I was playing with like Joey Piacic now mm-hmm. is now he like just finished the combine yeah. so he'll be he'll like be ready for the tomorrow. ready for the draft tomorrow mm-hmm. um, he was That's a it. freshman when I was a junior and then we had like a guy Andy Bevan who people played with as well who was just like this like force of nature at <laughs> number nine like he could lay anything off for you and he could just finish from everywhere That's so like it. working with those two guys and like Ryan Kane who was also like a winger with me um was unreal and so we just killed it that year and that kind of like got my hopes up and like we got a little bit of exposure and like people started to talk um and so then that summer i went like to columbus for a little while mm-hmm. and then that just didn't like i just didn't play well my hamstring wasn't right like just things like just don't fall yeah, in place yeah so my senior year was like I th- it was good mm-hmm. i mean obviously i don't think anybody's senior year is ever as good as you really wanted to you know yeah, what of course, I mean? like of you course, always so have these high expectations do more, yeah. it doesn't work yeah, out well with the bank um, that's close. But I also needed that. I had an extra semester in order to graduate. So, like, I was done 2015, fall of 2015 with playing. Mm-hmm. And normally people would graduate, like, May of 2016. Mm-hmm. But I was going to graduate December of 2016. Okay. So I had, like, a whole year of school left after the season. Um, so that was also, like, playing. Like, I got a year left of, like, some yeah, classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I can do. But I went with – I went to Harrisburg, the City Islanders, for, like, a week trial. Mm-hmm with like oh, this is like one of those little combines you go to mm-hmm. and then I got invited to like another week after that and then they asked me what I was doing with school and I was like I have another year yeah They're like just go back and come back in the summer right so I finished the semester went back in the summer and like thought I played really well but like nothing was developing I was there for a week and there was no real communications yeah and I was like I had an offer to come play for the bows up in Baltimore yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So I was like I'll just work at the soccer plex and play for play them. The bows, yeah. I'm going to have to play again in, uh, or like go back to school in the fall. Mm-hmm. So in between like that. And bows, bows were PDL? B- yeah, yeah, bows were PDL. PDL, yeah, yeah. So okay. in between that, that I makes also sense. went down to Wilmington because Pebo was yeah. at Wilmington. Yeah, I remember us training one summer for both of you guys yeah. to go to, to Wilmington. So, so I went to Wilmington for like a little, like another little weekend trial where it's like come down against a bunch of all people who are trying to make this yeah. season. And that like didn't work out. So, so going to the bows, I like played, did really well mm-hmm. during PDL, and it just so happened that like the coach at the bows knew Jason Arnold, mm-hmm. who is the was GM, GM at Wilmington. At Wilmington. At the so then I got my the opportunity at Wilmington and went there for a week. Yeah. At the end of the summer, and I was like buzzing, got to stay with Pebo, yeah. to connect. Like yeah. we were cooking every yeah. night. Like, <laughs> like it was like fun. Right. I was like, damn, this, yeah. is like, this is gonna be so sick. Uh, and then like people was like, yeah, I don't know, something's going on with the club. Like I don't know how like solidified the club's gonna be. Right. And sure enough, like they ended up folding. <laughs> so what was it like? You guys weren't selling enough tickets. I don't know. It was just it, like bad investments. Like what? Bro, what was it? I'm sure Poor management. A lot of different variables. Um, but the field that we played on was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, turf. Yeah, it was turf. It was old turf. I think you know to update it, it would cost more money, like a bunch of money. So maybe the uh, the owner didn't want right. to go that avenue. He didn't want to have you know build another. He just didn't want to spend money on that. Yeah. So um, they actually the guys, the staff that worked at Wilmington, they moved to Harrisburg. Yeah, um, you know because they had the same ownership. Yeah, and Wilmington just became a PDL team. Mm-hmm. So. You know, just a space for college players to go play. To go stay show good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool. And, and, and it was sad because, like, yo, Wilmington's a dope spot. Like, I right know, on the bro. beach. Like, the fans I know. were, you know, they were buzzing. They had good fans. Like, I was like, oh, it's a perfect place it's to a, play. It's a good. Sometimes yeah. things don't always work out like yeah. that. It was sweet. And you guys got to support the college 
students right there. How far are you guys oh, yeah. from from the college? Literally right across the street from uh, UNCW. Yeah, um, and they're not bad at yeah. soccer either, man. Yeah. For for a minute, I thought we were gonna end up playing at their state because they're gonna yeah. get some little grass pitch, but I mean, didn't work out in the business. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So now, so both of you guys. So that's when you was that that was right before you went to you went on the little the New York the New York yeah, stint, was, right? So that stemmed from so my New York trial or whatever you want to call that stemmed from Wilmington Hammerheads because they had the partnership yeah so right after the season um, Jason Arnold who we mentioned earlier mm-hmm. called me and was like hey look like you cool with going to New York I'm mm-hmm. like How's that partnership work? Uh, so a lot of teams, it's different now because you see a lot of teams in the US or the MLS teams like have their own USL teams. Like for example, Red Bulls have Red Bull Two. Right, 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 right. Two. Right. But at the time, you, they would just you know MLS teams would just partner with USL teams, mm-hmm. and you know that was that. back and forth. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so that's what it was. And at the end of it was 2016, uh, New York City had a lot of injuries. They had mm-hmm. a lot of uh, international call-ups and you know they're missing a bunch of dudes so they're like look we need a group of players it was four of us that just went up there we signed mm-hmm. a signed a loan deal and uh play for you know nycfc for a little bit that's so, it play for, yeah. play for vr yeah play for vr man that's yeah, incredible man better things too. yeah 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 yeah, yeah of good. course and that, that was when he first started yeah his yeah, coaching yeah. Center. i mean he's, that's he's sick subbed in for pirlo but not pirlo. So, so, I, now yeah, i mean yeah. i don't know like when it, you're just like yeah you know, it was just, well, you know it was, <laughs> well i talk about it a lot you know like people <laughs> I was like, how was it? Like, right, like, it. So, but it's I just, mean, it's like in that moment, bro. Like to explain, it, I, I've you know you get goosebumps mm-hmm. and like butterflies going into a game, and you get good. But like when I seen this dude Pirlo running off, I'm like. But I don't know. And then on top of that, a fan jumped off of the field. <laughs> like security's like doing some stuff over there. So I'm like, yo, what the hell shit is going on? Right on now? So I'm it's shook. Crazy, bro, I'm bro. shook. I'm shook. So um, just like looking back, uh, I wish they would have got it on film. No, for real. It was like kind of there. Was it? Yeah. 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 Like, the fan was, jumping yeah, on. Street. You can see like the little guy, like he jumps over the, like, the railing. Yeah. And then you see a security guard behind people like move to go get him. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He doesn't get full, but you see like motion the going motion, on. The motion, yeah, yeah. And, something's like, happening. Looking because he's like walking off and, yeah, yeah. and keep in mind we're in Mexico so like all I hear is Spanish bro like yeah, yeah, security yeah. guards and stuff so I'm like I don't know what's going, what's on. going I have on no idea yeah. what's going on um, so after it happened like people dabs me up whatever get on the field and I'm kind of just like alright settle settle down bro like, down, talking to myself down, settle yeah. down and then ended up playing decent I was playing left winger mm-hmm. um, and it was just crazy because before I went in I was like the first sub of the four of us. Mm-hmm. Vieira calls me over. He's like, "Look, I know you're a defender, but I know you can play left winger." And I was like, "Yeah, hell yeah! Like, you know, that's all I needed, yeah. from a coach. You know, so it really like was a testament to what kind of coach he was. Like, I wasn't even a true player of NYC, but right. he's just trying to you know lift me up and get me to play as right. best as I can. So, like, and dope. again, like it dope. it's that same thing we're talking about. Where like you reach a level, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they're like, "Go play this position," yeah. and you got you got like, yeah. you know, what I'm yeah. saying, ten minutes to go out there and make exactly. something out of it. Make up an impression. Yeah. My favorite story from his little experience, yeah. I like vicariously lived through him through <laughs> the whole thing. Was like, That's I was like, what, Yo, same thing that everybody did. So how was yeah. it? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, tell me dude, about it. And he's like, uh, you know, when you step into training the first day and you're playing, like, you're just doing like possession. Yeah. And you're in the middle. Yeah, yeah. and it's. David Villa, Pirlo, and Vieira yeah. around you, and you Vieira's just playing. And then, he's playing. Yeah, Rondo. all these guys are playing, and you realize that they've gotten to seven, eight, nine, nine. passes, and you're going to be in again yeah. if you don't oh, stop nine. them. Like, because he's just sitting there, you're like watching, like, oh yeah. man, this is sick. Like, I, did yeah. you get Meg? No, 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 no Meg. No. <laughs> okay, yo, so crazy. somebody That's did, but I won't, I won't mention his name. He got Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I mean, no, I, I, hey man, at that experience, man, you take anything, dog. You yeah, take no, sure. anything. It was, a, it was really a great experience. Just like the moment I got the call, yeah. flying up there. You know the hotels, seeing the facility, mm-hmm. every, like at that club, everything is a one. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's just dope. You know, mm-hmm. um, so it's just a you know I was grateful for that experience and so it. happy. You know, it happened to me. Yeah, so, so sick. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I think one last thing that kind of ties you you guys together. Well, two things that tie you guys together. Second, the last thing that ties you guys together. One playing a tormenta, and um, I know like a tormenta has a lot of interest in you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know what's yeah. what's good, but they're they're making big 
moves. I don't know if you've heard. They're making massive moves. I was a plane of Tormenta, man. I, I went down there and visited Io for a bit, and that was a cool experience. I got to experience the club. I got to experience, you know, I traveled and they played. Um, uh, um, uh, we went to Charlotte. Um, Independent. It was an open cup. Not nah, battery, battery. The Charleston, the Charleston battery. You know, um, and they they balled, they balled. Um, so how was that, bro? Uh, honestly, I think playing for Tormenta might have been like one of the best all around experiences I've had. Like playing for a club, That's the, um, which was cool because after like the whole thing with Wilmington, and then I go back to school, and then I try and do the hairspray thing again. Yeah. that doesn't work out. So then I get a call from Io, and he's like, "Come play for Tormenta." It's crazy how that I'm happens, like, right? All right, cool. why not? Right. My girlfriend's from yeah. Georgia too. Oh, she shit. Lived, so she was in Atlanta, and I was going to South Georgia. So it was like, all right, right there. Com- yeah, can you meet? That's not bad. But they set it up like as a PDL team playing with the Bows and then playing with them. Like you had, we had apartments paid for for the mm-hmm. whole summer. We mm-hmm. had two meals a day. We had training kits. Yeah, and we had like all the travel was set up. Yeah, playing for the Bows when I was at the Bows. I mean, I enjoyed it a, lo- a bunch. But like we were training at different places. So we yeah. didn't really have training kits, and you were driving yourself to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. That's so true. it was like, just a completely different experience. Mm-hmm. And the owners, Darren and yeah, Nitra, Darren's the man, man. are yeah, unbelievable. Good really like, good. Nitra's man. one of the nicest. She's people I've sweet met. as heck, man. Yeah, I get like, texts from her for every holiday. She'll yeah. say, hey, "How are you doing?" Yeah. Stuff like that, and she does that for all of her players. Like she just keeps in touch with everybody. Yeah. So you really get this like it's a family, family vibe. I was gonna say vibe. that it's unbelievable. That's the. Um, so I mean, I'd love to go back down there eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure they yeah. they miss you down there. They kept asking you know, it's Jamie, is he coming back? Is I was like, man, I, I, I don't know, though. I teased him. I told him like 2020, my lease will be up in Baltimore. Maybe I'll make my way down. Yeah. So, what about you, man? Are you, is, is this something that's at least on the table for you, or yeah. you got more things coming, or like? Definitely. I mean, I've had multiple conversations with uh, John Miller, I say the head coach. And, yeah. And, and it's nothing but good vibes down there. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just got to be something that makes sense, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of for them and me as well. You mm-hmm. know, um, my girlfriend's from Jacksonville, so it'd be a perfect. Situation. Holy shit, man! You guys you know? and your girlfriends, yeah, dude, and, know, and your opportunities. For real, for real. <laughs> that's lit, though. Yeah. I mean, that's that. I feel like that's just God looking yeah, out, man. No, that's that's just definitely that's awesome, you know? bro. Um, but you know, at the same time, you know, and John understands this. There's there's opportunities, you know, in in the championship, of course, and, and possibly MLS. So of course, uh, man. just kind of waiting to see what right. what makes sense. Keep um, your feet on the exactly, ground and just keep exactly, working, man. Yeah, yeah. Tomenta is a is a great club. You yeah, know? and I, that was one of the first things I told John. I was like, I'm impressed with the direction that you guys are going. Mm-hmm. You got everything in order. You know, you're going to be a successful club. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, they're not going to be in that league for a long, you know, they're going to make, know. they're going to make up, yeah. make their way to the championship. Yeah. Eventually, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things that, that I was impressed with is their, yeah. their organization and the caliber players that they're bringing in. Like, Dude, they're bringing they're in all their really good players. Can ball, like they can mm-hmm. all ball. That's so. true. Um, that's yeah, true. that's a big time. One of, the, one, of, one of the, I think their greatest attributes was um, their developmental side, mm-hmm. their, their academies and their, and their, uh, their kids, man. The way that organization is ran, it's, it's incredible. And it's yeah, something yeah. which I, I went down there. I was there for a couple of weeks and I got to learn a lot about how they do things. Oh, and I'm looking here exactly. and like we could implement so much of the stuff that they do there, here. And oh, it was yeah. just because I feel like the resources we have here are a lot more than they have. There, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, you know, no, it's just it's, it's it is what it is, Georgia, right? You know? <laughs> right, like, we're in like the DMV area, yeah, in terms of like a potluck for players is so much better, it's so much here. better, you know what I mean? To the, yeah. the club, no, 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 doing yeah, so well with what they've got, yeah, really well. Here, you have more players, more facilities, the sports medicine here is probably top notch, you know, everything, coaches, like, so I think all it needs is just a proper system, but the yeah. tormentor. So they got it figured yeah, out for sure um you know Proper. so that was dope yeah. Yeah, anyways uh yo these jackets everybody's probably wondering why we got on these dope jackets man so you guys are you know done your college thing done your pro team you guys decided to start a denim company yeah one thing which i'm huge on on this show is not just bringing just soccer player mm-hmm. players on but people who are doing like dope stuff you know what i mean really dope stuff and to me this is the, like i'm into fashion and i've been watching you guys from when you guys just started like rocking denim to now you guys got a whole freaking denim company. So what's up with that? How'd you guys get started? What's it about? And where where's it headed? Thrift store. Yeah, how it got started. Yo, for real though. That's lit. So I got back from Tormenta. Yeah. And I started applying to jobs because I was like, look, you know what? Like if nothing's gonna come through, I've got like 
six months before preseason starts in the USL. Mm -hmm. And if I get invited, if I happen to get invited to something there, like I got to make money between now and then. So I was applying to jobs and I was going to Goodwill. Yeah. And I found a camo jacket at Goodwill. And I went home and I was like, I painted a peace sign on it. And then I like wore it and people was like, that jacket's pretty sick. Let's go, let's go shoot it. And I was like, all right. So we went and we shot it. We went to the Gaithersburg like railroad. Yeah, yeah, spot. yeah. In Old Town. Yeah, yeah in Old Town. Old Town. Yeah, so we yeah, shot it there. That's dope scene. And I man. put it up on my Instagram. And one of Nick Braskaski, the yeah. kid that I met at West Virginia, who I'm good friends with, was like, where'd you get that jacket? And I was like, I made it. Do you want it? And he was like, yeah, how much? And I was like, I don't know, man. I got it at the thrift store. Right, he, was, he, he was like, yo, send me like 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, we'll do 50. So he sent me $50 and I shipped it out to him. And then I made another, I went to Marshall's or it was a TJ Maxx or Marshall's, but I saw this sick denim jacket. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it on this. So I, I did another jacket with that one. And then Peebo had a jacket from TJ Maxx. Yeah. And he was like, yo, you want to put some patches on this? And I was like, sure. So then I just started like That's lit. doing random stuff like that. And his buddy yeah. from Phoenix, uh, Monty, yeah. hit what me up. He, this guy's living in Arizona. He just hit me up through Instagram. I was like, hey, man. I love your jackets. Can you make me one? Yeah, I was yeah. Like, it's because it's cause, sweet. All right, <laughs> like that's dope. So we were bro. drifting. We were at, yeah uh, in the what's it? Gatesburg Shopping Center, or whatever. Bro. The Goodwill, right? Yeah, yeah. The Goodwill right there. Oh, oh man, yeah, jacket, and it had like you know this little design on it, whatever. I was like, yo, we should throw some patches on it, whatever. Do some patches on it. I was going on a trip to Vancouver like mm -hmm. a couple weeks later. Same thing. Had the gray hoodie, rocking the denim, and this. Uh, I was at this bar waiting for my boy. The bartender comes. Like, Where's that jacket from? So you know, like. <laughs> That's hard, like, you know. Got got a little stylist yeah. back. Yeah, home. she's like, yo, that's that's sick. Like, she yeah. gave mad credit on it. So I was, told him, you know, I was like, all right, well, let's go like take pictures of it. Posted the picture, and that's when Monty, my boy, was like, yo, I need one of those. Right. So Jamie ended up making him a jacket, and you know, he was a happy customer. So that's where we kind of got the, yeah. feedback, the positive feedback from there. That's but lit. It's, it's been like this collaborative thing of like, you know, I'll find a jacket and we'll like do whatever, and then like people's like, all right, yeah. let's shoot it. This is where it's gonna look good, and then we all post it, and then. It was just, it honestly happened like randomly. Yeah. And so we, it kind of just built from there to the point where I couldn't find jackets at TJ Maxx. He couldn't find jackets That's at Goodwill. Crazy, so I like found a vintage wholesaler mm -hmm. and I ordered 30 jackets from a vintage wholesaler. And all their, they, what happens for them is they get donations and they get like piles and thousands of pounds of clothes mm -hmm. and they, sift through all of it and they find the top notch clothes in there and they put them in boxes and they like sort it all out yeah. and then you can go buy it for like super cheap mm -hmm. and then you flip them so they all the people that go to them are like vintage stores right. where you can get vintage t-shirts and vintage jackets and stuff like that and so I just put in an order with them and started painting again dude yeah. that's such a that's a dope story man that's really because I mean it's kind of the same thing I kind of saw the picture on IG and I was like, yo, that's a dope jacket. I think you guys were like on a like a bridge or something. Yeah, it's a Gatesburg um, one. It's a Gatesburg it's a one? It's town from between the two garages. Oh, I never even peeped that. That yeah. looked like something totally out of some other yeah. city, state, country, somewhere. And I was yeah. like, yo, that shit's it, hard. It's really random how it happened. We usually, like, when we chill, we, we just bounce ideas off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just came that's all it is. Shit. It's like we're, every time we hang out, wherever we are, it's like an incubator. Yeah. of just like, what if we did this? Yeah. What if we did that? No, Dude, keep, and then it was just like t-shirts. So now we've got t-shirts and we're trying to design more stuff and create more content keep them coming man just keep them coming it, bro like, like personalized you know because mm -hmm. obviously like you see a you know denim jacket is fire and then you know put whatever you want on right it, like whatever we offer yeah and i think it's because i think it's it's also you gotta have an eye for it because like you're saying you're going there you're not just grabbing any denim though you're yeah. you're looking like oh this one's tight you know what i mean so like Coming in, I wouldn't imagine I would be rocking a denim like this, yeah, dog. Yeah. This is totally like an '80s style, like 100%. Stuff, you know what I mean. But it's just it yeah. just fits some kind of and way, it's, man. It's crazy too because that's like he said with the custom stuff. So like the website, the way it is, like people are really like kind of intimidated by it to order because mm -hmm. all you you can order T-shirts because the T-shirts are gonna come. I like a t-shirt we're just gonna print it and give it to you right? right but all the jackets you don't get to see what we've got at jackets you just tell us what you 
what you want. Yeah. Because like that jacket, no one else has that jacket, and they might have a, a peace sign print, but no one has that. that yeah. No one has this oh. jacket because every single one of my jackets oh, different. is different. That's hard. And so we've got like I have this pea coat from like the 1980s of a, a general's pea coat yeah. in army green. Yeah. And I'm like waiting to like paint on that. It only fits people. Wait, like wait, Steve Roberts. It's like oh, you gotta be really tall. I mean, so I'm really, like, I'm really in the pea coats, dog. Yo, you yo, I might have to check this pea coat out, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm really, I'll I'm really picks, in the Picos, man. man. This thing is, this thing is sick. Yeah. So it's things like that. When I open up this box of all these jackets and like we're we're sifting through them, I'm like, this is so cool because mm-hmm. I've got 30 jackets. None of them are the same. All of them are different sizes. Like that size right there could have been an extra large in the 80s. That's true. But it's a large fitting you right now. Right. So how do I? How do you display a size and be like, it used to be this. And now it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to almost be like, model is six foot two wearing size wearing large or what we think is a large Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just like we have to finagle the way we want to display the jacket right because they're so unique and they're vintage so their their sizing isn't really right Mm -hmm. but it's fun that way but that's I was just about to say and that's that's an art in itself I think yeah that's 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 a creative you know way to go about it and I think the modern person or people now are they like the art behind that and it's not just a denim jacket it's like a unique you got like your whole fingerprint because you're the only one that has something like this you know what I mean and then it's kind of a surprise too because you don't really know what you're going to get you know what I mean it's a little bit of suspense suspense that kind of like coming in I was like I don't I'm just going to drop you know whatever and get a jacket and I come in here I'm like oh both of these are hard you know what I mean well that's the and that's the response that we want and that we hope to get and that we have been getting it's like it is like I said it's daunting to be like this guy's gonna make me a jacket he's gonna paint on a denim jacket mm-hmm. I don't know how it's gonna fit mm-hmm. but both of them fit mm-hmm. and both of them are good to go right so anyways cool. boys like it's been real dude, we can talk forever it's yeah, over an hour right. and a half man it's been yo thank, <laughs> thank you guys so much yeah. for coming on Jamie of course. it's a pleasure man hopefully I'll probably see you Sunday ball again 100% right <laughs> Fibo man on your break thanks for coming by man wish you all the luck I know you got a lot coming your way I know you got some decisions you gotta stay make tuned. man stay tuned. of course we're gonna <laughs> Stay tuned, bro. We stay tuned to both of you guys. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned to your IG uh, for the for the for the um, jackets. Um, I'll try to put something in the caption or something Sweet. for you guys, yeah, man. Yeah. Like these are dope. You guys keep being dope, man. Keep doing your thing, man. And um, thank you guys. And for everybody, like, what's if you got one takeaway from this? What would it be, man? Keep being you. Keep hustling. Keep grinding. Have fun. Enjoy life, man. Yeah, life. facts. Jamie, reiterate that and just <laughs> use all the time in the day. Yeah, I mean, you true. might have a job that's from true. you know seven to three or nine to five, but what are you doing from five to ten before you go to bed? That's so, it. that's true, man. Hey, that's true, guys. Thank you for coming on, man. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Straight. Yeah, that was my youth. That was my youth. Oh,